Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. And today, let's talk about pricing comps. How do you price books for resale? So we'll go over the types of comps, how, how to comp, and where to find your, your comps. So with, you know, it's hopefully this will be great information, especially if you're new to the book selling market and you're trying to get in and you're trying to figure out how do I price things and hopefully you'll find this helpful. So look forward to your comments. Um, subscribe and hey with that let's jump in so okay so you you found something you, you you found this great book and you know it has great potential and now you have to decide how much you're going to sell it for and this is a big item on your on your listing is finding price comparisons or comps and and you don't just dream up a number you have to do a little bit of research on most books to to get a good pricing comp so you know, it it's, can be time consuming and you don't want to make a mistake and let something that's really valuable go for a lot less than it should. But at the same time, you always want to have a fair price so that your, your inventory and your books that you found will move, that they don't just sit there because there's, you know, they're, they're out, of, out of price. So that is one, one thing about book selling, especially if you are selling like nonfiction or hard to find books, a lot of time the pricing, you, you do have a little more flexibility on pricing because someone that is trying to find that a specific edition or a specific book on a certain subject matter, it may be a thin market anyway, and there may not be that many of them out there. But still, most of the time, there's always more than one item. And if somebody in a thin market comes and does a, does a search, you want to make sure they come and buy your item and not somebody else's. So let's just think about first off what what kind of comps are there the the two major kinds there's listing comps and there's sold comps and i distinguish between those because a lot of times you'll find books that are for sale on ebay or books that are listed on amazon but they haven't sold you'll see ranges a book may be valued on the listing at 50 bucks, but there's none of them sold. That is what I would call a listing comp. Now, if you look at sold items and you see that these are real sales, now sometimes they're best offers, so someone may be asking 100 bucks for a book and they accepted a best offer, so you know it didn't go for the full price, it went for a less, lesser price, but still it was a sold price. We put more value on a sold comp, right, because Anybody can put anything out there for whatever price, and it's meaningless until someone buys it, right? Yeah, so it's it's it maybe it's a, a measure of potential value, but the real value of something is not what you think it is or what your listing says. The real value is what you sell it for. Alright, so that's a sold comp is what we put the most emphasis on. And if we're trying to do listings and find do price comparisons, always look at sold. And lot, sometimes I'll find books that, you know, they're, they're kind of rare, they're thin, I can't find a sold comp, and it may make it a little more, you know, a little more challenging. But, so that's your two types. I would call it listing comps and sold comps. Go put more emphasis on your sold comps. Okay, so now where do you find comps? Okay, for me, the, the first, I'll, I like eBay comps because I sell primarily on eBay. Amazon comps are great because so many people shop by going to Amazon first and seeing what something's valued at Amazon. So if a book is listed on Amazon for 20 bucks, you probably need to have your price at $20 or less because a lot of people will just go to Amazon and buy it if they want it. So there, that's kind of a good barometer of a baseline price. So Amazon and eBay are the two main main areas that I use for comps. But there are also, sometimes I run into books that I can't find, and there's other sources. There, uh, one particular good one is uh, ABE Books. Actually, Amazon owns them, but it's a more of a bookstore collect, collector's market. That's Abe, A-B-E, books.com. There's another one called Alibris, A-L-I-B-R-I-S. Sometimes I find it useful. I know I've heard some people have found things on WorthPoint. I haven't really used it much myself, but those are kind of the three or four, and if, if all else fails, 
I'll just type it into Google and see what comes up. But generally, I can find something on eBay or Amazon, and if those two fail, I, it's the rare book that if those two don't have a price comp that I can't find it on ABE books. So, and then Alibris is my fourth tier. So that's kind of, you know, where to find comps. You just put in the ISBN, put in the title, put in the author on the apps or scan it, however you, you'd like to work it, and you'll get your prices back. Now, you have to be careful because sometimes, I know I've had it happen to me, like I'll be in a bookstore or something and I'll scan something. When I scan it, I'll say I'll put in the scan the UPC code and um, uh, Amazon will come back and say $200. And I think, oh man, I found a great book. I get it home and I type it in and for some reason, it, it's like another part of the listing comes up and it'll be it's worth like $2. So that happens to all of us but you know it's when you find your comps if you're looking for things or if you're doing for your listing that that's basically what you do you just have to put in the isbn or the title the author and see what comes back for older editions that do not have the isbn number you're going to just have to put in the title and the author and see what happens so um, that's where you find it that's good good three or four good sources that i use all right so now let's let's look at how to comp okay I look at this as in several different uh, levels. The first is what I call an easy comp. There, you put it in eBay, put your title on eBay, uh, look it up, and there's lots of them and they're all priced about the same. You know, 15, 18, 20 bucks, it's an easy one. Lots of comps and they're all about the same. You know what the market rate is on the book. That's the easy comp. Then I say you have the confusing comp. So the confusing comp is when you put it in and there's a very wide range of prices. It could range from $10 to $100 on this book, and it's like, what's going on here? What's a, a fair price? Well, some of those you know are gonna be inflated for whatever reason, but that's where you have to think about what you've got. Do you have a first edition? Is, is your book in really, you know, as new condition, or is it ratted out? Uh, is your book uh, signed or inscribed? What sets yours apart that could command a higher price on this range that you found? And you know, just for like an everyday book or something that's not in good condition, you probably need to be on the lower end of that range. It is confusing and you just have to kind of pick your spot and go in. Now, things that such as condition, edition, or signatures, uh, maybe, maybe it's a, you know, does it have the dust jacket, things like that, that is what will push you up, so keep that in mind. All right, so then the next one I would call is the limited comp. And this one's for me is when, like, I don't see anything, say, on eBay, and I find one or two copies on Amazon, and sometimes they're really high. So what do I do in that case? Well, in that case, I may price it under the Amazon price, but still keep it high. And then for me, I use buy it now for pretty much all of my books. I do not do an auction because, again, for a book with a thin market, the auction just doesn't make sense. People want to come in, buy it now, and I also do it, buy it now with the best offer. So if I err on the side of being a little bit high, someone can offer me, you know, what they feel is right, and then I can counter offer or just say no thank you. So. Um, but for example, I had one this, this, this last week, I put it in a video, I think last week, a book that I'd found on roller derby from the 60s. And this book was about a 50 to $75 book, but mine was a library edition. Well, I priced it at $39.99 and I instantly got a, which is always a good sign, a best offer for $15 and I denied it. I got another offer later that night for $15. I got another offer the next day for $15. So I thought, well, you know what? For an extra library book, I may have overpriced this. This is probably a sign. So I did some counter offers, and then I had a guy come in and offered 20, and I counter offered 30, and then we decided on 25. And I thought, well, for the condition this was in, other offers that I was getting, I paid um, a buck for the book, um, making 25 on it and selling it in like two days was, fine by me. So that's just an example of something that just happened to me. All right, so that, that's the case of the limited comp. You just have to use your best judgment, come lower than Amazon, and um, you know, be, put, use best, the best offer and buy it now. 
Then the third one would be where there's no comp, okay? Um, and in that case, that's where you have to maybe just, you have to look at similar um, products, similar books, or, you know, you just have to take your best guess. And, and unfortunately, that's kind of the advice, right? If you can't find something just like it or similar to it, um, then you're just gonna have to, to put in a value. You maybe start it a little higher with the best offer and then work your way down. Uh, you know, unless you're, you're nervous about, you know, if you know it's a $10 book, then sell it for $10. So, so that's it. So we got listing comps and then you, you've got sold comps. We like sold comps better. Uh, use your sites like Amazon, eBay, ABE books uh, to, to find your comps using the ISBN, author or title or all of the above, all right? And then remember the types of comps you got. You got the easy ones, that's a no-brainer. You got the confusing, confusing ones, which with experience you'll get better on and look at your addition and your condition and other things that will make it, you know, price, how to, how to price it in that range. You got the limited comps, which you can, you can price a little bit higher, but then, you know, use your buy it now and your best offer to, to you know, not price yourself out of the market and give buyers an opportunity to, to interact with you and get a better price. And then unfortunately, you've got the case where there's no comps. And then you're just relying on your best judgment and your experience, which will come as you do more of this. And hopefully, in all those cases, you found your books and you found these things at a reasonable price. You only have 50 cents or a dollar in them. So if you're selling them for 20 or 30 or 40 bucks, you know, if you're off by 10 or 20 bucks, you know, that, that, that hurts. And you want to maximize your profit, but at the same time, you still made, a good, made some good bank on it. So that's it. That's my thoughts on pricing comps. I, again, look forward to your comments. I hope it helps, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll see you subscribe. And, you know, happy hunting. Find some good treasure, and be safe out there. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.